in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come As it is in heaven, give 
us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen Good morning. As we begin, I invite you to please stand and turn and face the entryway to the church. And Father Tom, I thank you for your presence, your prayers here today, and I invite you to please show your support for the family by joining as fully as you can in the prayers of the Mass, and especially in the songs that are indicated in the program you are handed on the way into church. Gather to pray as always in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our God who raised Jesus from the dead be with you always. And with your spirit. My friends, we gather to remember how in the waters of baptism Phil died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. We place this white cloth over Phil as a reminder of that day when he put on Jesus Christ in baptism. It is through our faith in the power of Jesus' saving death and resurrection and Phil sharing in that through baptism a faithful life. We pray that he'll now be raised up to be with the Lord forever. As we begin, I invite you to please join in our opening hymn. You'll find it at number 671 in the Maroon Gather hymnal, Here I Am, Lord. Number 671.
the Lord of snow and rain. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is my Lord. I have heard you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of the bond between Christ and his church. Grant peace and mercy to your servant Phil, who is united in love with his wife, Jean. May the care and devotion of his life on earth find a lasting reward in heaven. Look kindly on all his family and as they turn to your compassion and your love. Strengthen their faith and lighten their loss. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her son. Whoever honors his father atones for sin and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children and when he prays is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is number 23 in your Maroon Gather hymnal, number 23. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, Beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants. 
beyond my fears from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are by my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears. From death into life You have set me a banquet of love In the face of hatred Crowning me with love beyond my power to hold Shepherd me God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and at the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Gene, again to you and to Tim, Maria, Chris, Missy, to our deepest sympathies from many friends here at St. Michael's. In the midst of sadness, we pause to thank God and celebrate a husband of 57 years, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, And you're going to talk a little bit later about some of those things better than I can. But some things that really touch me. I've I've had many people say to me that their father, their grandfather, always put family first. But I've got a whole new image for that now. When he first started out as a salesman for Heinz, he was often found in the parking lot trading ketchup for baby food. You know, dad's got to do what a dad's got to do. I just like that image, something about that. And it, is, it, is, it captured the way you talked about he was, he was all in in everything he did. Very much in his com- commitment to this community, in part helping to found the, uh, the Prior Lake Jays, but many other ways, and, and join this community or wherever the Lord may have taken you in your time. Uh, very much a father, a grandfather who made sure that you knew that he cared, not just by his presence, but by his words and even when you're, as we share, even when your dad, my dad turned 96 yesterday, he still tries to slip me gas money. And uh, <laughs> Phil was very much the same all of his life. Uh, but more than anything else, what we know is that he was a man of faith. And uh, from the moment that Judy would open the church on Sunday morning, as long as his body allowed him, he was here an hour or so before Mass. He used to hang out kind of back there for a little bit and eventually work his way in. But you know more than anything I say, it's not only important to have faith, but it's so important that your children and your grandchildren see a prey and know that you, that is so important to you. And that is clear that he did that. It is for that faith that we believe this is indeed not just an ending, but a wonderful new beginning. We pray that he watches over us in a way that we can't fully understand. And we pray that if we are faithful, if we love one another as fiercely, as strongly as we can, and serve our Lord and have, show our faith in him as best we can, then one day we will be with Phil and all those we love in God's dwelling place in heaven. God bless you. Let's stand now. As we place these petitions before our loving God. To each of these prayers, I invite you to please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Phil, who has joined his parents, Francis and Josephine, and siblings Kay, Richard, Franny, Joan, Jerry, Pat, and John, and granddaughter Jessica in the kingdom of God, that they may all rejoice in everlasting life with the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faith of all of us, that through the example of Phil's life, our faith may be strengthened and deepened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Phil, that they may come to know comfort and consolation, 
and that God may heal their pain and dispel the darkness that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear the cross of pain in their mind or body, that they may never feel forsaken by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, do, for those who cared for Phil in his illness, that they may be heart, heartened by God's word to us and consoled by the continuing presence of Jesus among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For friends and members of our families who have gone before us, that they may be granted an everlasting home with God's Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family, unity, and closeness, that it may be strengthened within our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessings of 57 years of marriage and for the blessings of children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, that Phil may continue to watch over his family from the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for always listening to us as we cry out to you. Grant what we truly need this day through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as our guests are brought forward. Why can't I? 
If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? Please stand and pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. So we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Phil. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. So of angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. I invite you to please join in kneeling at this time or to be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess resurrection until you come again until you come again Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing 
the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Phil, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. My friends, in this day we so long for that lasting peace that only Jesus can bring. Let's share a sign of his peace with those around us, turning to our neighbor and saying, peace be with you.
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In a moment, we invite those who share our Catholic faith and wish to receive Holy Communion to come forward in two lines down the center aisle. Again, at this time, I invite you to please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 596 in the Gather Hymnal, Be Not Afraid. Number 596. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die the thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Pass the raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, Blessed are your poor, for 
the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked tongues insult and hate you all because of me, Blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I will give. We'll take a few moments now to share some memories from Phil's life. Thank you all for being here. And last night, too, was amazing. It was really cool. I didn't, I, I don't know, I guess I don't realize that all you could do was just to be there. And I, that's words enough. I know me and my friends have a hard time with that, but uh, it's appreciated that everyone came. So uh, this is definitely not a talk I was looking forward to, but it's truly an honor to be able to do it for him. I'm Chris, and Phil Rooney's my dad. <clears throat> Most people know me as not being an emotional type, but this most likely will become just a myth today. A lifelong friend of mine, Tim Hansen's dad, passed away a few years back now, and I was so impressed how he was able to get up in front of everyone and honor his father the way he did. That's when I said that when the day came, I had to do that as well. So I've got a really good feeling that Phil is definitely gonna be here. He never wanted to miss a celebration, a party, a happy hour, Breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night snack. You get the point. Uh, here's to hoping he has a little sense of humor and he has no superpowers yet. <clears throat> I've been told to sip of water or just to take a moment and stare at a blank object. Object can control the emotions, so don't be offended if I stare at you, if I have a little problem. But uh, to be honest, my savior has always been the World Series teams of 87 to 91 for the Twins. So if you hear me say Kirby or Herbie, you'll know I just need a moment. So Philip John Rooney was born to Francis and Josephine on March 6, 1941, in Padua, Minnesota. This is where the story begins. Or was it a year later? Dad never could quite decide if he was born in 41 or 42. If you knew my dad, he exaggerated. I don't know if you guys knew that, but he exaggerated a little. I figured he always had that ace in the hole and would use it when or if it was needed. I mean, if the guy didn't even know when he was born, how could you not doubt all the stories he's telling? Many of the stories Dad told, and it was confirmed by brothers and sisters, that Phil had some issues with authority. This adorable trait afforded him many swats with rulers in his one-room schoolhouse, a school miles away that you had to walk uphill to and uphill back from. Still something I haven't been able to duplicate yet. Thankfully, on those walks back, he was able to grab, grab a cigarette butt, or 10, and outside the local watering hole. Chores sometimes became optional. Curfews allowed for scaling walls and having window access, and disagreements were simply settled with punches. Phil was quite the ladies' man, too, but that's a story for another day. Dad was in the National Guard, and he and another enlisted decided they should take a military vehicle to the bar, some 30 miles away and forget to tell the commanding officer. That didn't go over too well, but classic Phil was able to get past all these obstacles. Dad headed to the city and secured a job with Heinz, you heard the story, selling their brand to local grocery stores. The entrepreneur in him started a grocery swap in the Kmart parking lot. You know, a bottle of ketchup, 
for two applesauces and spam. We never liked that spam. <laughs> Remember you get that? We didn't like spam. Um, I, I'm sure this was encouraged by their employers. This was Phil. He would always figure it out. His sales skills led him to real estate, but thought it may be smarter for mom to take her license first. Always a gentleman. <laughs> and he might have needed her on the test. Baby. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil was shortly licensed thereafter and helped buyers and sellers for 42 years. They also built custom homes, fixed up others, and had rental properties. They founded Realty 3 and quickly grew to three offices and many agents. When the market went to crap in the late 80s, uh, mom and dad started building custom homes. This was good for me as I had a summer job that I wasn't paid for, but our schedules went something like this. We would be up and at them at 7-ish, First stop was church. We go to church every day before we go to work, um, almost every morning. After church, we needed to go to Lakers to get a little breakfast and talk about the last or the next game and what we would do that day. This usually meant painting or staining for me. So we'd finally hit the job site, change into our work clothes, and get prepped for the day. But most days, we were missing or forgot something, so we both had to go to the store to go get it. <laughs> uh, like things like weird things like paint and stain and brushes, but we needed to work that day. So after getting settled, we worked for a good hour. Then it was time for Burger King. Since we wanted to get the job done, we would usually eat on the job site, but we would both go get the food and bring it back to the job site. My game schedule and what position I would be that day would typically end, would be the end of our work day. Pitching always got me a half hour off early. So I'll never forget those days. When I was licensed in 1990, we settled into the Realty House for the next 23 years. If you ever worked with Phil, you probably heard a few of his favorite sales pitches. Unbelievable. You're not gonna believe this place. I have never seen anything like this one, and this one's gonna sell fast. <laughs> he would use them all the time. Good marketing. So, Dad wasn't too fond of those computer, computers, but then came Missy, problem solved. He loved, he loved working with buyers and sellers and was always so excited for every closing. I think his favorite time in real estate is when we moved our office to the pool house. He would get there early and, and uh, <laughs> see who would make him breakfast. Nina always obliged. Is Nina here? He loved that, yeah, there she is. She would always oblige. Um, then he'd do a little work on the pool, make a few calls, and then prepare for our social hour. It was pretty cool. Though he loved his career, his best work was as a father. Water, hold on. Is this smart to kind of do the funny things first and then get to the... All right. My dad was more than just a dad to me. He was my best man. He was my real estate partner. And he was always my biggest fan. Oh, damn. Um, as far back as I can remember, my dad and mom were always there to support me. I have no, I how, no idea how they did it, as I know how the real estate gig works, but I would always find him, whether he was camouflaged by a tree in a car just out of sight or prominently on the hill to watch his son. I, I, was, uh, I was never embarrassed, though, by all of that, because all my friends love Big Phil. The godfather, Al Davis, just win, baby. His dad fought a lot of medical issues through the years. He had a rare blood disorder, which was never recognized until the last couple years, which would turn normal procedures into life or death deals. Over the, but he'd always fought them. Over the last couple years, medical issues became more frequent, and falls would turn into long stretches of not being able to walk. But nothing could take him out. I nicknamed him Cockroach. <laughs> For some reason, he wasn't too fond of that name, but I explained to him that it was really a compliment. I said, they, you can't, they can't kill you. <laughs> we are thankful for the time that we had with Dad. I'm thankful all of us kids working together for what is best for our parents, not just what's convenient for us. I'm super thankful Maria took charge and got to spend, uh, she got to spend a lot of time with him. Um, got to bring him to a lot of breakfasts. <laughs> Um, okay, hold on. Uh, she's been amazing. I'm thankful my dad gave me everything he had and showed me the importance of putting my kids first. Water. 
I'm thankful for a life that wasn't cookie cutter, but a life that gives you what you put into it. And I'm very thankful we still have our mom to harass. The night before he went to the hospital for the last time, I should have known something was off, as he actually complimented the food at the prison, a name he affectionately gave McKenna Crossing. He actually liked it, but he called it prison. I, I remember many times I'd come back and I'd throw his wheelchair and I'd say, he's your problem now. Get rid of him. I think he liked that. You know, but when he went to the hospital, I wasn't worried. The cockroach would beat this like he always did. Life won't be the same. How could it when you had that guy? Okay, this one's a bad one. Let's get to the end. The last words he ever said to me were, He said, I don't know what we would do without you. No, Dad, I don't know what I would have done without you. I love you. Well, that is something to follow up. <clears throat> uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Alex. I'm the oldest, probably the favorite grandchild. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but I am the oldest. Uh, I got to give old Phil the grandpa name for the first time 31 years ago, and uh, he was really good at it. So eventually I want my wherever my daughter is. She'll need to come up here and help me finish this speech, but all right. <clears throat> First of all, thank you guys all for coming out. Um, the outpouring support I know means so much to all of us, um, especially my mom and Missy and Chris and my grandma and all of us cousins. Um, as you can see, I'm the one that's the more outspoken one. I've been up here quite a few times today, <laughs> but it's all out of love for our grandpa, so all right. 11,492 days. That's the number of days. I don't have water. <laughs> <laughs> to have, I was blessed to have you here with me, Gramps. From the very beginning of my life's memories, you're there. Always scratching my back, holding my hand, which still annoys all of my brothers and my daughter because now I'm, I've always held their hands. <laughs> Slipping me random 20s, telling me stories of the gypsies that raided the farm, or as Chris mentioned before, your school teacher getting scolded by your mom for getting you with the ruler. You never gave us a dull moment when you were around. Many of the things probably shouldn't talk about here. <clears throat> Always making us laugh with all of your antics and stories. Besides the laughter, I think the most profound attribute you had was your ability to connect. I think all of us here could probably say the same. Every person you ever encountered along your life journey felt special, especially your grandchildren. I feel confident in speaking for all nine of us in saying that we always felt loved, we always felt supported, and we always knew how special we were to you. Fast forward a few years, I remember the day that uh, my spouse and I were trying to decide on names for our baby that I was still carrying. And we came across the perfect one. And we didn't know the gender, we weren't finding out until we had the baby, but we knew the name, and that was Rooney. We didn't tell anybody we were naming the baby Rooney, whether it was a boy or a girl. <laughs> and I literally have pictures in that video that I made um, of us FaceTiming. I, I wouldn't tell anybody her name until I got grandpa and grandma on the phone because I needed them to hear it first. So, 
FaceTiming grandma and grandpa literally minutes after giving birth to my first baby to tell them, and just seeing the joy and love beaming through the phone from my grandpa and my grandma is such a core memory to me that I'll carry with me forever. The past few days, I've spent a lot of time reflecting on my life before November 19th, 2022, and trying to embrace the after that we're all now navigating. Unfortunately, I'm not a stranger to grief, but fortunately, because of that, I do know that there's still beauty and growth in the journey, and I have peace with that. My sweet grandma reminded me, as I was saying goodbye on Friday night to my grandpa, something that her mom told her after she lost her father. And it was something along the lines, can't quote you exactly, Grams, but our bodies are mere shells for our spirits. Losing the physical relationship is hard. It's really, really, really hard. But my grandpa is still very much so present within all of us and everyone here. And Phil Rooney will not let us forget that anytime soon. So I feel good in knowing that He'll always be here. I want to leave you all with just a couple small requests. One, as life move, moves forward, please remember to check in often with the people that you love and never assume you'll get another chance. And always remember a couple lessons of Phil Rooney. Family first, always, no matter what. No grudges, just love. And show up to literally anything and everything that you can for the people you care about, because I can promise you, every single person sitting over there, that's one thing we've all reflected on, is Grandpa was just always there. He was always there at everything. And it leaves a really big, lasting impact. Thank you, Grandpa, for being the best of the best. How lucky I was to share those 11,492 days with you on earth. Give my sister all the hugs she missed out on all these years. Oh, and Rooney, wherever she is, I think she's running around in the back. <laughs> Rooney says thanks for sharing your desserts with her. And to leave you all with some of the words from my daughter's favorite show, Bear in the Big Blue House. Goodbye, goodbye, good friend, goodbye. For now, it's time to go. But hey, I say, well, that's okay. I'll see you very soon, I know. Hello, <clears throat> thank you for coming. I'm still a little out of it and I didn't write anything, but uh, I'm good on the fly. So when I found out the news, um, I had plans to go to the beach with the lovely local lady in Thailand. And uh, at this point, everyone was kind of sleeping because it was you know, early in the morning. And I thought, you know, get out of your head go to the beach, have fun, and you know, don't just sit in your room and, and do that. So I go there, and I felt really bad for, for my lady friend because you know, I was just looking at the sky, pounding you know, cheap Thai beer, Chang, it's terrible. And I was just thinking, you know, I've done a lot of crazy stuff, I've done a lot of dumb stuff, but I've done it my way. And I've really tried living to the fullest, and through the whole time, Phil was always there. And I remember in high school, I was even more crazier than I am now. And they sent me down to Arizona to live with them in the trailer. And uh, we bonded a lot there, but I was happy to get out of there. They got, I needed some space. And, uh, but the dude would go to everything. Everywhere I went, like you would show up to practices on a, on a lawn chair, and <laughs> yeah, like my dad said, I was never embarrassed. I thought it was super cool. <laughs> and then 
I would always hear about these stories he'd tell at like Dakota, and he made me some like superhero, and he said some crazy stuff. And anyways, I had to get, I had to speak. You know, I was with someone. And I said, I'm gonna get on my head. I'm gonna enjoy the moment, and I'll. I can't fix nothing. It is what it is, and just you know, enjoy. Like Phil would want me to enjoy where I am and what I'm doing. And uh, so we finished up on the beach. Uh, we went back to her place. It was a penthouse. It was overlooking the beach. She had the pool table in there. She had a pool on the rooftop. I was like, damn, you know, this is, this is nice. And uh, we kept drinking. Some other activities uh, happened. Sorry, Jesus. By the end of the night, um, I went up to the pool, you know, that overlooked the bay, and I was smoking a cigarette. And it hit me. I was like, where's the fine line between selfishness and living to the fullest? And I knew right then and there I had to get back. And when I was looking, and not necessarily just for Phil, because I think he would have been happy either decision I made, but for my family. So I was seeing the messages and on Facebook, and they're all getting together and and that's, that's something that I think, it just hit me. You know, I need to find that balance between living crazy and, and not being selfish because these people are the reason I'm able to live crazy. They've supported me. They've been there for me. They've done all these different things for me. And uh, yeah, I just, I want to thank Phil for kind of slapping me in the face and then for what he's done to the family because I think we are definitely more close after this. So, thank you. Thank you. Let's stand now as we conclude our prayer. Merely following the Mass, you're welcome to join us as we go to St. Michael's Cemetery for burial. Immediately after that, we'll be going to the point for luncheon if you want to. If you're not going to join us at the cemetery, you can certainly just head over to the point and uh, wait until the family comes there. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of a loving husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, a friend. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Into your hands, Father of mercy, as you commend our brother Phil in the sure and certain hope. Together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Phil in this life and the ways he blessed our lives. These are signs to us of your goodness of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now in peace we take Phil to his place of rest. Our closing song is number 723 in the Gather Hymnal, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Number 723.